Hey everybody, this is Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another episode of ATP Ask the Pastor. Today's question is a bit of a doozy. Hello, Pastor Sullivan. My name is CC. We'll call him CC to protect identity and all that sort of thing. Well, I was born Roman Catholic, but now consider myself Reformed Protestant, Covenant Theology. Lately, I have desired to become a Lutheran priest or pastor due to the fact that I would like to serve the Lord full time. I've been viewing your Augsburg Confession of the Faith videos, and I'm extremely confused at how many Lutheran synods there seem to be. ELCA, LCMS, Wells, ILD, I don't even know which one you are considered. I seem to be drawn to the Lutheran faith against my will, it seems. I'm wondering if you can clear up some of the differences between them. That's the first part of the question. Second part of the question, he goes on. Uh, I have also called the LCMS and the Wells seminaries, and I'm very disheartened to find out that the LCMS requires a two-year college degree of any subject before being considered to the seminary, as well as the Wisconsin Synod wants four years of college before being considered to the seminary, with an emphasis on learning Hebrew and Greek. Now this, to me, seems political. If I'm called to the faith, why should I have these secular prerequisites? I find that the Catholic Church has the right perspective in the sense that if you decide to become a priest, you're given room and board and a stipend and so forth in order to focus on serving the church. You also don't accumulate such large debts. I've heard the debts can be up to uh, $70,000 and even over $100,000. That seems insane to me. So is there a synod that if one does not want, uh, excuse me, so is there a synod that if one does want to become a pastor of the Lutheran faith, that these burdens are taken care of by the church? That's the second part. Uh, as far as the first part, uh, dear CC here, uh, you know, I'm glad that you're being drawn to the Lutheran uh, confession of the faith. Uh, I, I'm happy that uh, you've been viewing the Augsburg Confession videos. Uh, however, if you have the desire uh, to serve the Lord full-time in the ministry, the first thing I suggest you do is that you join a Lutheran church. Uh, a lot of these questions as far as what are the differences between LCMS, Wells, uh, Eldona, which is what I am, Evangelical Lutheran Diocese of North America, uh, you know, all of these different things, that is, that, that, that's part of your preliminary process of saying, hey, what do all these church bodies believe? What are the differences? Um, and then which one do I think aligns more with the Holy Scripture and the Lutheran Confessions then? That's really your first task. Uh, I can help you out to a certain degree on that. We've got a video on uh, what's the difference between the Eldona and the Wells, the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Uh, and we've got some other differences. Uh, what are the difference between videos in the tank uh, that are hopefully going to be airing this fall? Uh, so we can help you out a little bit with those things. I can tell you that for my, uh, in my case, with the Evangelical Lutheran Diocese of North America, the Eldona, we call it for short, uh, we really stick to the scriptures and the Lutheran confessions and that's it. Uh, from my point of view, what you're going to find in all the other Lutheran synods and church bodies is a desire to stick to the confessions and the scriptures uh, but you don't see that in practice. Even in the most conservative of those church bodies you see a fair amount and in some cases a real good amount of uh, people going away from the word, uh, away from the very clear words of God, and away, away from the very clear words of the Lutheran confessions then. So I can help you out with that on ATP to a certain extent, but really if you want to be a Lutheran pastor, step one is you got to join a Lutheran church, and you got to do some of that legwork then. Now, moving on to the second part of your question, uh, which I found very interesting here about seminary education. Uh, you lament here that uh, seminaries uh, in the LCMS and the Wells require a two-year or a four-year college degree in any subject before being considered for seminary. And you make the comment, now this to me seems political. Now generally in our day, uh, when people say, well this seems political, they just mean, you know, I don't agree with this. I'm not entirely sure what you mean by this when you say this seems to be political. Uh, why am I called, uh, why if I'm called to the faith, should I have these secular prerequisites? Well there's two reasons why. The first, and probably the most popular reason for uh, getting a two-year or a four-year college degree before going on to seminary work is because seminary ain't a big Bible study. Seminary is graduate level work. And so a college degree offers the seminary proof, uh, or at least alleged proof, that you can do the workload. Uh, seminary is not a piece of cake by any means. You know, here in the, in the Eldona, uh, we have St. Ignatius Evangelical Lutheran Seminary. 
And uh, you know, it, it's again, you know, it's, it's graduate level work. It's not a cakewalk by any means. If you can't do, if you can't swing undergraduate level work, then you're going to drown in graduate level work. The amount of reading, uh, the ability to write, the ability to synthesize a lot of these readings and to put them on paper and to write uh, you know, coherently, that's those things that ideally should be taught in college. Uh, those are the things then that if, if you don't have a mastery of those, you're not going to cut it in seminary. And the reason that seminary is so difficult is because of the monumental task that is the pastoral ministry. When you're dealing with people's souls here, you got to know what you're talking about, and you've got to know, uh, you know, you've got to know your stuff, and that's why uh, seminary education is the way it is. So that's the first reason that they require, uh, you know, even at Saint Ignatius for the Eldona, we require a two or a four-year college degree before entering in seminary. You know, partially for that purpose, you got to be able to do the work. This isn't easy lifting here. This is this is real, honest, difficult studies. Now, the second part of this, uh, and this is something that we stress in the Eldona, that you're not going to get in the LCMS and the Wells and other places, is uh, you will, you, know, you will, the way things are going in our culture, more than likely you will have to be bivocational at one point or not, at one point or another in your ministry. And by bivocational, I mean you will be a pastor serving in a church, and you will also then have to have a job outside of church. Now, this is where that two or four year degree can really come in handy and work well for you. If you've gotten a two year or four year degree in a field, uh, that helps you then getting, uh, that helps you in getting a job and getting a decent job then too. You know, frankly, whatever jobs are available uh, when you have to be a bivocational pastor, uh, you know, you don't get to go through the one ads, you know, pick your perfect job. That's not the way it works. But again, you know, the more training you can have in a specific something, you know, that's not, you know, a BA in history or theology or you know, something like that, you know, philosophy. How often do you open the newspaper and you see the classifieds, you know, oh, uh, historian wanted or philosopher wanted or something like that. So that's another reason is uh, to give you some knowledge, to give you knowledge based on something that's not theology, and that's not specifically history. Now, there's nothing wrong with those degrees. Uh, I have a BA in history, and it served me very well in the parish and in my graduate studies, uh, and even now in my continual studies. Uh, but that's another reason. Is you will more than likely be bivocational. That's just the way the culture is going. The church uh, externally, visibly, is shrinking. And as the churches shrink, then, so do offerings, and so is your salary then. And so you've got to be willing to go out there and get a second job in order to fulfill your divine calling to stay in whatever place the Lord's going to call you to. Now, as far as your uh, last thing here about the Roman Catholic Church then, and then providing room and board and stipend and all that sort of thing, that'd be awesome if we could do that. But again, that's not the way the world's going. The Roman Catholic Church you know, is a multinational uh, you know, billion-dollar you know, thing, a uh, billion-dollar conglomerate. They've got the money and they've got the funds to do that. Whereas in your Lutheran churches, you just don't have the money to do that. So yeah, it'd be awesome if we could, but it's just not reality then. Um, you know, the thing about student loan debts, yeah, that's terrible. But that's another reason why you know, this is one of those things where you have to count the costs, uh, like Jesus says several times in the gospel then. So yes, I agree, those costs are insane. So is there a synod that if one wants to become a pastor of the Lutheran faith, uh, that these burdens will be taken care of by the church? Not that I'm aware of, but let me shoot straight with you. Don't choose your Lutheran denomination based on who will give me a free ride. That sounds quite mercenary. That doesn't sound like the humble heart of service that's required in the ministry. I'm not accusing you of that. I'm just saying be careful. Uh, you know, It sounds like, like I said, first, you need to get yourself into a Lutheran church, and then you really got to do some homework here. Uh, being uh, Coming from a Catholic background uh, and then now being Reformed Protestant, uh, you know, being interested in covenant theology. It sounds like you need to keep studying the Lutheran confessions then uh, because, well, it just sounds like you're not quite there yet. Sorry to burst your bubble then. Hope this video has been helpful. If I can give you any help following up, shoot me an email and I'll talk with you off list. Otherwise, thanks for the question. If you've got a question about this or any other topic, shoot me an email, atpholycross at gmail.com. I'll be happy to put you in the queue and get to you as quick as we can. We'll see you next time.